Well, we made it to video 30, and this time we are going to um, fix this to-do that we left ourselves with last time, because um, uh, we had... Uh, let's have a look at the script. The Lua script can do all these things now. It can call global methods with values and return value. I can create a new object from a class. I can call a function on that class with parameters. I can get the result, and and I can call ones without um, parameters as well. But the one thing we were missing was um, we didn't handle the case where uh, we just wanted to get um, just a, a value off this object. So if I say x equals uh, sprite x, just like that. So I needed to just get that value. And it would come from this. We have a sprite structure here, and it has an x and y. We just want to be able to read that x value. Um, so that hasn't been handled. So if I, if I compile that, um, this should now fail because this we didn't handle this case and we left ourselves with an error. So let's see if that works. Yeah, to do need to check if x is a property of sprite. So that's the to do we left ourselves. So we need to get that working. Um, so again, this comes from the let's go right the way down. This is still part of the index meta method that we put onto this um, object. It's just calling to our index user datum function, which we've got up here. Here it is, which just does a little bit of checking to see that we're a user data. And it checks to see that we've got the property that we're getting. Um, and then we picked up the name that we were accessing. So that could be a function name, but in our case now, it's going to be the property. So that's what the runtime type library calls, uh, like class member values. It calls them properties. Um, so in this case, where we're checking to see if that if that um, property is actually a method. And if it is, we, we call the method. And if not, we threw this error down here. So next thing we should do uh, is I think we can pull properties off this type information that we've got. So uh, there's the type info uh, that we passed through to Lua. We passed this through as an up value, I believe. Did we do that? How did we get the type info? Type info was an up value, uh, or the type name was an up value, and then we got the type from that. So that's where we got our type info. So we need to check to see, we need to get property, and we've got uh, the field name there. So that pulls the property out of the type information. Now again, this still might not be there. It might be some something that hasn't been accessed at all. Um, so we can just check, I think we just check is valid. That's how this library works. If you're using a different runtime type library, then you need to check your documentation on what you need to do on this. Uh, I'll put, put the error in there. And in fact, I'll put another error in because down here, there's one more case that we've got to handle. Uh, and that's uh, user values, which we did in another video. So user values are values that are not actual native properties, but they are... Um, uh, stuff that you add on to yourself in Lua. So you, it, this has only got an X and a Y, but we could add on a Z as well. Uh, or the person in script can do that. So the last thing we would do is check to see if if this isn't any of the uh, uh, an, a method or a property. It could also be a user value. So we need to check to see if is a user value um, type. So that would be our last error to fix in that case. So if this is valid, um, what do we need to do? We need to somehow get this property and um, give it back to Lua in, in some way or another. So um, to do that, we're going to need, uh, we can get, I think we can do on the property, we can say get value. Um, so we need an instance to get the value from. So if this is a this is a class, this would be getting the property from the class, and it wants the instance of the object of the class that we made. Uh, and in this case, I think we've got it commented up here. Um, it's actually uh, it will be the first thing um, at the bottom of the Lua stack. It will be the user data or user datum that um, we are actually working on here. So in our case, this will be our sprite. Um, object and it's encoded into this variant and I think we can just pass this through to here uh, which will get uh, which will get as another variant so uh, so that variant is now the 
the property that we got from the user DOM. So if we're passing in X here, we'll be getting the field name X, pulling the property out, then say we're saying to this, get me the uh, the value of X that's on this variant, which is our sprite, and the results should turn up in there. Um, so the variant, remember, is just a piece of memory that's got the information in and it's also got information about the type of what it is. Um, you can see why working with runtime type information is very weird because everything's so abstracted away, it's very hard to tell uh, what's going on half the time. Um, but uh, that's what we need. Now we need to just get this result and uh, push it onto the Lua stack. Um, so we can return it to Lua, but we need to return it in a way that Lua can understand. So if it's a number, we need to convert it to a number. If it's a string, we need to convert it to a string, um, so on and so on. Um, but we've actually already done this code before. So we actually did it. Uh, where was it? When we wrote the invoke method function, which is here. So this invokes a method on object. Uh, this does exactly that when it returns a value from a function because it, it collects all the stuff here. We're sending parameters to Lua here. Um, so we're putting all the parameters on the stack. We invoke a method and the method returns a variant. And then what do we do with the variant? Well, we convert it so that we can push it onto the Lua stack and leave it for Lua. This turns out to be almost exactly the code that we want to call now. Um, what we want to do is take a variant and put it onto Lua stack. So we can, this is great. We can refactor this code out of here and use it again um, in the uh, in the other place when we're actually accessing just a property as well. So it would be the same code. So what we really want here is something that says to Lua, uh, we want to give it the Lua state and we want to give it this result. Because that's the same thing that we've got at the other end um, when we're doing our property. We've, we've just got a Lua state and a variant. Uh, and we want to put it onto the stack. So that's really, that's the function we want to write. And we want to take this code uh, and we want to shove it into a, refactor it into a to Lua. Let's put it above here. Uh, so I'm just pasting all that into a new function. It's going to return the number of values we're leaving on the stack. To Lua needs the Lua state. and our TTR variant. And this is, it's called result in here. So that's almost exactly what we want, except we're, we're, getting, we're, we're getting the names of these methods to invoke and we, we're not passing that in this time because in the, in the case of the property, we haven't got a method. So we could actually change that to, instead of a method, we could say get type of this result. So we're unable to uh, get result. We're unable to, let's say, send to Lua type this. And same thing down below. Um, we're actually already doing it down there, so we don't need this line. Uh, unhandled, it's not a return type anymore, it's just a type. Uh, and it's not from a native method. Unhandled type being sent to Lua. So we've cleaned up those errors and that that should compile and, and it does the same thing uh, it did before. It's just we've had to like change the error message slightly that, so that it's not assuming that it's invoking a method. It's just getting this result. Um, let's just see if that compiles. Yep. Um, and did we call it down below? So we've called it in the case where we've invoked a method. Let's go back to our, uh, where is our in index function? There it is. So same thing when we do the properties, um, we'll probably just check that this result is valid because again, this might not exist. So if the result is valid, uh, then we want to return to Lua the result and if it's not valid then it falls through again to the next pass which is check to see if it's a, if it's a user value so hopefully if nothing's gone major wrong uh, this should be all we've got to do let's give that a go so it kind of looks like everything we had before uh, 
Sprite says four and five. It's it's got oh, that's when we we're drawing it four and five. So let's just see if that that's actually worked. Um, let's go up here. So uh, let's take our call out. Let's see if we get the same result. Yeah, so four and five. So what are we getting here? We're getting, we make a new sprite there. I think when we make the new sprite, we, we set the X and Y to zero and zero. That's how it works in here. Yep, set that to zero and zero. Uh, and then we move to one and two and we return something. I think this is just a test return. It just returns the values added together, uh, which is here. So we're sending one and two in there. Uh, we're moving the sprite to one and two and then we're returning three. So we should return three there and then we move it by three and three. So we, so three and three and, and it's already at one and two moves it to four and five, which is what we had, isn't it? Let me just check that again. Four and five. Cool. So if we just get the, we'll just get the value of X out uh, just after here. Um, and we'll just add that on to the first one. So at that point, the X should be one uh, because we've moved it to one and two. Uh, and this so this should come up as five and five if this worked out. So it should say the position is five and five. Let's see what we got. There we go, five and five. So that uh, is us reading our properties out of the sprite and we're doing it in a generic way, which means now if we, we add more properties to this and we register them down here with our sprite X and Y, then they, they can automatically just be read in Lua as well. We don't have to do any more work. So it's much better than what we had in the previous case where we were doing everything manually. Uh, it's all automatic now. And we've also completely reused some code we had before, which again, isn't finished, like um, because basically all we're handling is int and short. But what it means now is that when we go through and we start improving this, and handling more types and strings and things like that. It's going to improve not just the case where we're reading properties, but also the case where we return values from functions as well. Um, so this is all pretty good. So let's just put a little bit of documentation on that and then we are done. So this uh, uh, takes the result and puts it onto the lower stack. Um, and it returns the number of values left on the stack. Because it could still be zero in some cases, I suppose, that it's possible for this thing to, to end up being zero and it's possible for it to error. So that's all pretty good. So um, next time we'll handle the, where is it? Uh, next time we'll handle the user values and maybe look at um, handling writing these values back to properties as well. But um, I've got to say, this is all like, this is pretty cool. I mean, this isn't a fully fledged binding yet because it doesn't do everything. But um, uh, if you look at that, that's that's a script that can do quite a lot of stuff there that's all accessing native code. And if we go to the bottom here, um, 278 lines of code, and that includes the, uh, includes, and it includes the actual loose script testing itself. So it's only about 260 lines of code to get everything that we've got working here. So that's all pretty cool. Um, so we'll move on to the next stuff uh, in the next video. Uh, this user value, that might be really easy, might not be, we'll see. And then we'll, we'll get this to do even more than we did before. So we'll catch you for that one.